Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome at the English news program here at Ora News. And now, the night's news. The secretary of the socialist deputy in Saranda, Kocha Kokdima, Agron Sane, was charged today from the prosecution with duty abuse and sexual abuse and harassment against minors. The 62-year-old, whose actions shocked the public opinion, will be trialed according to Article 108 of the Criminal Code. The prosecution has taken the footage of the scandal made public by the media and the testimony of the woman who accused Sane. The Tribunal of Saranda will meet on Tuesday at a hearing session to determine the measures which will be taken against the 62-year-old. The secretary of the socialist deputy, Kocha Kogdima, in Saranda, Agron Sane, was filmed while he demanded sexual favors from an unemployed woman and her minor daughter. In his testimony, the mother of the 14-year-old minor said that for over six months she had faced the pressure coming from Sane, who wanted to have sex with her and with her daughter. In his conversation with this woman, Sane stated that the girl would benefit from having sexual relations with him, since he would later run for mayor. The mother of the 14-year-old girl daughter has decided to report this incident to the media, since she had lost faith that she would get support from the police. The woman said that she was very upset, but she didn't trust the police, and this is why she didn't demand help from them. A few days ago, while the situation was becoming worse, she addressed to a local journalist. This marked the start of a series of registrations, which revealed to the police the other ugly side of the officials who are supposed to listen and solve the problems of the citizens. After the release of the video, Agronzane was arrested by the police. The mother of the minor has now requested the help and support of the state police to protect her from threats, since she is now unprotected and a jobless widow. The Democratic Party has reacted today about the sexual scandal in the headquarters of the Socialist Party in Saranda where a woman and her minor daughter were asked for sexual favors in exchange to a job. During a press conference, the deputy of the Democratic Party, Oerd Bulibashi, said that citizens are forced to pay in all offices in order to receive a service. The sexual scandal in the headquarters of the Socialist Party in Saranda, where the secretary of deputy Kogdima demands for sexual favors with a minor girl in exchange for a job to her mother, is a real indicator that our country is being ruled from such people. This is the way Prime Minister Edirama, head of Parliament Meta, and Deputy Kogdima work. In all party offices in Albania, in all administration offices, citizens are forced to pay in order to receive a service or to be employed, stated Democratic Deputy Oerd Bulibashe. According to the highest force in the opposition, the license to abuse was given by Rama, Meta, and Kogdima by nominating people with previous criminal records in important positions, such as the case of Deputy Arben Doka. The license to abuse in any possible way was given by Edirama, Ilir Meta, and Kocha Kogdima, since they are the ones who nominate drug traffickers as directors, since they appoint on top of the regional councils those accused of kidnapping, since they bring inside the parliament those accused of prostitution, concluded Bilik Bashe. The Democratic Party has continued to accuse Prime Minister Edirama despite the proof that show that he has incriminized the parliament. During a press conference, the deputy of the Democratic Party, Igli Tsara, stated that for over a month, Prime Minister Rama has refused to comment about the facts which clearly show that he has brought a person with severe criminal records inside the parliament. I am here today as a member of the Democratic Party and as a citizen of this country to report and to request transparency regarding the criminalization that Edi Rama, as a prime minister, is making every day to the state, to the parliament, and to all Albanian politics. Edirama continues to be silent for 39 days. He is silent despite the violence against the opposition, which were organized by him. Violence as a tool of political repression against the opposition remains a source of pressure and political crisis. It remains and it does not fade away from the heat of August. For 39 days, Prime Minister Rama has kept quiet 
in spite of all the facts that prove the incrimination of the parliament, the incrimination of a country which has worked for 24 years in order to achieve the status of a candidate country to the European Union, concluded the deputy of the Democratic Party, Igli Tsara. According to him, no one dares to shut the mouth of the opposition, since the Albanian people will not allow it. Albanians do not agree with political violence of the opposition or with the scandals that are being published every day, starting from the evidences that members of the parliament are convicted of kidnapping or prostitution and continuing with the sex scandals in public offices. The Democratic Party and all of its members will not accept and will not allow Prime Minister Idirama to bring his standards in Albanian politics and in the parliament, since his standards consist in violence against the opposition. Us, the Democrats, will be here every day in every office, institution, village and city to report crime and to make transparency over the incrimination of policy. We will be here through our actions, political will and respect for the Albanian people, concluded Deputy Tsara. The head of the Democratic Party and also the mayor of Tirana, Nursim Basha, has reacted today regarding the latest political situation in the country. Through a post in his social network, Facebook, the head of the Democratic Party and also the mayor of Tirana wrote that the country is in the hands of criminals and this is not what the Albanians have dreamt of. Evil is trying to take over our country. These are facts and not just empty words. Evil has grabbed the political system and the government. We are the first country in Europe where those convicted of crimes and prostitution are elected deputies in the parliament. We are the only country in Europe where kidnappers are appointed as leaders of the council of district by the prime minister. This is not what we deserve. This is not the country we have always dreamt of, wrote the head of the opposition, Dulcim Pasha, on his social network, Facebook. The Socialist Party has once again asked today for the resignation of the mayor of Tirana, Luzim Basha, since, according to them, he has done nothing to improve the situation in the capital. During a media statement from the Artificial Lake, the Secretary for Economic Affairs in the Socialist Party, Ervin Bushati, said that Mayor Basha, who is also the leader of the Democratic Party, has granted a construction permit for a 20-store palace at the park of the capital. According to Bushadi, this is a scandalous mockery to the citizens of Tirana who are hoping of more parts and not for these actions. During the last three years, Basha has left no trace of working in Tirana and the only thing he has done is the help towards the structures of the Democratic Party instead of worrying about the welfare of the citizens of Tirana. Today we report and demand the resignation of Mr. Basha as mayor of Tirana after failing to keep his promises that he would not deal with politics, but he would be a mayor who would only look after the citizens of Tirana, said Bushati. After the numerous accuses of the Socialist Party, the municipality has also reacted for the first time regarding the request for the resignation of Luzim Basha and also about the construction of a 20-store palace at the park of the capital. The reaction of the municipality stated that with every day that goes by, Prime Minister Rama intensifies his lies towards the mayor. According to the city hall, the citizens of Tirana do not forget who was the one that blocked the budget for months for the cemeteries for new investments for kindergartens and schools. In its reaction, the municipality also said that Prime Minister Rama is blinded from envy and has ordered the blocking of the new boulevard of Tirana and also the blocking of the multi-model passenger terminal and the tram project. Justice must discover the chain involvement of directors in the Central Bank of Albania, which led to the grand theft of 713 million lek. Economy expert Zef Preci states that another emergency task is the return of the money to the state budget as soon as possible, as this not the practice of the Albanian state in such events. 
As for the proposal of the head of the Commission of the Economy for changes in the law on the Bank of Albania, Preci argues that it should come after the fully discovery of the theft scandal and after those responsible are brought to justice. In relation to the impact on the economy, the expert states that besides damaging of the image of the institution, the impact on the economy is not considered. The businesses of Albania requested the change of all laws passed so far from the government of Prime Minister Edi Rama. In a media statement, the head of the Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Nikolin Yaka, said that the Chamber of Commerce will present a package within October, while one of the requirements will be the abolition of the value of added tax on those occasions when it is reimbursed. The head of the Chamber of Commerce presented also the proposals that will be submitted to the Ministry of Finance to review the fiscal package in 2015. Albanian business often expresses its reservations about enacting laws by the government for this sector and the impact that they give. A powerful blast was felt today in the city of Borel since a vehicle went in flames and later exploded. According to the local police, the explosion is suspected to have occurred as a result of a quantity of TNT which may have been placed at the vehicle type Peugeot. Eyewitnesses at the scene indicated that the explosion happened as the driver and his family went out of the car, while many citizens who gathered at the scene took their vehicles that were near there in order to avoid any other explosion. The incident occurred around 10.30 a.m. in front of the city hall. The driver, Gazmir Dema, 34 years old, a few months before the outbreak, went out of the car along with his wife and his two children. Dema stated to the police that he did not have any gas cylinder in the car, as he was initially suspected. The 34-year-old, Gazmir Dema, had a conflict some time ago, which he has reported to the police. For the moment, this is thought to be one of the tracks of investigations for the police. Fortunately, no one got injured from the explosion of the vehicle. The flat of Sabri Huka, who is the former director of the Forest Service in Berat, went in flames today at noon in the 30th anniversary neighborhood in Berat. His wife, Vangelia Zuka, was seriously injured. The house, close to the industrial market, is seen by the residents of the area when it went to flames. The neighbors have notified the fire department, which arrived at the scene and entered in the apartment, where it found a 46-year-old woman without feelings and suffocated. The woman was immediately given the first aid and was then sent immediately to the regional hospital, where she is in a serious health condition. Vajeli Zuka was home alone at the time of the fire and could not come out because of the flames. The director of the fire department, Duman Spathara, claims that when he arrived there, the house was covered by smoke while the woman was lying on the floor unconscious. Although the fire flames were extinguished in less than 30 minutes, damages caused to the house are great. The house and all its furnishings inside are completely burnt. Sabri Huka, director of the Forest Service in Berat during period 2002-2010, was not in his home when the fire started. A joinery shop went into flames in the village of Larushk of Pushkroya. The incident happened around 4 a.m. this morning. It is suspected that the cause of the fire may have been some equipment that served for food processing. It is suspected that the equipments were left on, which has caused the fire. No injuries are reported, while material damages are substantial. According to the police, only some burned equipments cost up to 40 million lek. The joinery workshop was owned by citizen Altin Ruta. There were some apartments near the joinery, but thankfully they have not been affected by the fire. Although firefighters from Kruja, Tirana and Leja went immediately at the scene, they could not save the joinery from the burning. 
while its owner says it arrived late and that the citizens were the ones who tried to extinguish the fire. A huge fire started on the house where Prime Minister of Albania, Edi Rama, lives. It is learned that the flame erupted in an apartment that served as a dental clinic on the second floor of a building near the police directorate of Tirana, where the head of government lives. Residents of the house have immediately come out of the building, while firefighters were able to enter in the building by smashing the windows of the dental clinic. It is learned that no one was hurt while the flames were located within a few minutes. It is suspected that the tire farted due to an electric spark. Representatives of the opposition bloc in Kosovo, Democratic League of Kosovo, Alliance for the Future of Kosovo and Incentive in Kosovo have had the meeting today to discuss about the new government. Opposition parties gathered ahead of the Constitutional Court session where the representative of this bloc and that of PDK will face each other in order to offer their arguments in relation to the elections of the Speaker of Parliament in the first sitting on July 17th. The meeting has been held behind closed doors, while sources say that the representative of the opposition bloc on the August 21st session of the Constitutional Court will be Vyosa Osmani. The leaders of the opposition parties said that the political crisis is expected to be solved after the decision of the Constitutional Court and that the next government of Kosovo will be a comprehensive government, but according to them, without the participation of the Democratic Party of Kosovo. Serbian politician Oliver Ivanovic will go on trial on August 26, accused for war crimes during the Kosovo conflict, as well as committing murder during clashes that committed afterwards. Ivanovic, a former Serbian government official and head of a Kosovo Serb political party called Freedom, Democracy and Justice, will appear before Kosovo judges for the first time at the basic court in Mitrovica next Tuesday, his lawyer Nebojska Bjalic said. It is expected that he will enter his plea and that the indictment will be read, Vlaich said. The case against Ivanovic has sparked protest by Kosovo Serbs and allegations from the Belgrade authorities that the charges are politically motivated. He is accused of committing war crimes during the Kosovo conflict in April 1999. He is also charged together with former Serb policemen, Dragoljub Delibasic with committing murder during clashes that left 10 ethnic Albanians dead and many more wounded in February 2000. Ivanovic and Delibasic are further charged with inciting others to commit murder during the February 2000 violence which saw many Albanians driven from their homes. Three other defendants in the upcoming trial, Ilica Vujacic, Nebojska Vujacic and Aleksandr Lazovic are also accused of aggravated murder and attempted aggravated murder in February 2000. Ivanovic was a so-called bridge watcher at the time when the alleged offenses occurred. One of the Serb militants who patrolled the main bridge in Mitrovica, which divides the northern Kosovo town into Serbian and Albanian sectors. After his arrest, the Serbian government offered guarantees that if he was released from detention pending trial, it would ensure that he would appear in court, but his pleas were ignored. His party, on Sunday, called on Serbian government to again offer such guarantees because his remand in custody is set to expire on August 27. We know that the prosecutor will ask for a custody extension. But if the government provides guarantees, there is a possibility he will be released, said Senija Bosovic, an official from the party. The Serbian government has so far made no comment on the indictments of Ivanovic and the three other suspects. Serbia's EU accession talks are progressing well 
but Belgrade will have to comply with a joint foreign policy at the time of joining the European Union, says Peter Stano, spokesperson of European Union Enlargement Commissioner Stefan Füle. Since the start of Serbia's accession talks with the European Union, 18 out of 35 chapters have been subject to analytical screening, Stano said. The reports for the significant chapter 23rd and 24th have been adopted and the Serbian government is already working on action plans for them, Stano told the Belgrade-based Recession Novosti Daily. The opening of one or more chapters depends on the decision of the European Union members, states, and comes when they feel that everything in the process is ready and that the negotiations may begin, Stano explained. The European Union is not forcing anyone to do anything, Stano said, adding that Serbia made a voluntary choice when it submitted its EU membership application. Speaking about the European Union sanctions on Russia, which he said have been imposed of clear legal grounds due to an illegal annexation of the Crimea and continued destabilization on Ukraine, he said that there are third countries that comply with them. As a membership candidate, Serbia is expected to fully comply with all the EU foreign policy decisions at the time of joining the EU, Stano noted. He said that he has no doubts about Serbia's commitment to the dialogue with Pristina and added that European integration are a comprehensive process of reforms and establishing compliance with European Union rules and standards. This does not include work on chapter, but all 35 chapters gradually. And although there is no dialogue underway due to the post-election situation in Kosovo, Serbia is continuing to work on significant matters, Stano said. The integrations are not a result or a reflection of developments over a few weeks or months within a certain period of time, but of continued reform efforts and result over several years, Stano concluded. The officials in Brussels have warned the countries in European Union candidate status against exploiting the Russian embargo on European Union food, imports to their own advantage. A meeting of European Union foreign ministers on Friday said it expected candidate countries, of which Serbia is one, to refrain from measures aimed at exploiting new trading opportunities arising from the introduction of these measures. Byrne has learned that the wording of the formulation is specially related to Serbia because of its close ties to Russia and, spe and special trading agreement. Serbian officials have made no secret of their wish to boost exports to Russia now that Kremlin has banned imports of food from the European Union. Serbia has resisted Western pressure to impose sanctions on Russia on account of the Kremlin's perceived role in separatist fighting in Ukraine. It has adopted a neutral stance on the crisis in Ukraine. Under a free trade deal between Serbia and Russia signed in August 2000, goods produced in Serbia are subject only to a 1% tariff. A senior European Union high official told Bern its expected compliance from Belgrade. We expect Serbia to comply with our decisions as the country seeks membership of the Union, he said. We expect compliance with our foreign policy, which at the moment includes sanctions on Russia, and at the time, we expect solidarity, he added. We will certainly address this in our upcoming progress report on Serbia, where we will once more underline that we expect Serbia to fully adopt European Union's foreign policy, the same source continued. President Vladimir Putin announced a full embargo on food imports from the European Union, the United States and other Western countries in response to sanctions imposed over Ukraine on August 7. Serbian Chamber of Commerce data showed that Serbian food exports to Russia 2014 rose by 68% compared to the previous year. They were worth $117 million in the first six months of 2014 well up on the figures for 2013, when food exports to Russia were worth $185 million for the entire year. Serbian exports made up only a small fraction of Russia's total foreign food needs, however, 
in 2013, Russia imported about $42 billion worth of food and agricultural projects. Experts believe that Serbia has a chance to increase its exports to Russia of fruit, vegetables, meat products, dairy products, and alcoholic beverages. The embargo already increases the demands for Serbia's fruit and dairy from Russian companies. We are receiving calls from the new buyers from Russia all the time, Vilmos Fogas, a farmer from the province of Vojvodina, told the media. If we could produce three times more apples, we could sell them all, Fogas said, adding that at this moment larger production of fruit is not possible. The owners of the Kuch dairy factory in central Serbia said they had received requests for products from 50 Russian companies in the last five days alone. Demand, compared to last year, has increased by more than 100 percent, Mirjana Dutic from Kuch told Serbia's Tanyuk news agency. Serbia's Chamber, Chamber of Commerce on Friday sent Russian counterparts a list of factories and producers that are ready to increase production in order to meet the demands of Russian market. In 2013, Russia was Serbia's fourth largest importer of goods from Serbia, behind Italy, Germany and Bosnia-Herzegovina. And that was the English News Edition prepared for the day. Have a great evening. See you tomorrow. Good night.